G'day guys, we're back with the patrol again. Today we're going to do the front axle swivel hubs. Um, should be a fairly straightforward job, uh, pretty cheap as well. So all up, I think this will cost me somewhere between $200 and $300. I managed to get the kit for somewhere under $200, maybe $180. Um, I then went and got some different inner seals for the axle. Um, the grease was about 20 bucks each, so this is wheel bearing grease and then this is your ball joint CV grease. Um, don't use the wrong grease in your CVs, it'll cause you dramas. Um, and this here is a little tool for the wheel bearing, so I think that was, yeah, like another 20, 30 bucks for that. Um, so we're not going to waste any time, we'll get straight into it. So this is the kit from Patrol Apart. Um, it comes with seals, bearings, um, for your kingpin and swivel hub rebuild. Uh, some advice from Tom from Rome Life is these inner seals here for your axle, get rid of them. Go to Superior Engineering and buy these trail gear inner seals. Um, Tom said these are way better than what comes in the kit um, and they just seal so much better. He said he had to pull his axle open again afterwards, so go with these instead. They're only 40 bucks, um, so that brings the whole kit to like 200 bucks, 220. Um, and that's about it, that's pretty well everything you need. Okay, so we got our axle here, we've got our hub block right there, brake disc and our knuckle here and the rest of the axles in there, that's all pretty easy. We're going to start by taking off the hub block, then we'll remove the brake assembly and then get down to the knuckle. Now, a good tip for doing this would be to break these um, hub block bolts before you take the tyres off the ground because you can see that it just wants to spin. So what I have to do now is lock it with a breaker bar, which the only real place that you can get to is these lugs or somewhere in the brake assembly. Um, so it's a lot easier if you just do it on the ground. So now we're down to our axle and wheel bearing. And once we remove this wheel bearing lock, we can pull off our brake assembly. Now there should be two Phillips head screws in here retaining your wheel bearing. For some reason mine's only got one. That's what you get when you buy secondhand cars. So one little screw. Okay, so now we want to pull out our little lock nut. And this is tricky because it's kind of glued in with the grease tackiness. So we want to get our wheel bearing tool, put him in, spin him around until he drops in, and then grab a half inch tool, and we're just taking that preload off, and then we wind him out all the way, and we can remove our whole brake disc. Okay, so if we pull back now, we're gonna pull off our whole brake rotor and our wheel bearing is inside there. So that's our wheel bearing that sits inside the brake rotor. So now we've got three little 10 mil screws. You can get a Phillips head on these, but I would just recommend using a 10 mil socket. So we've got six bolts here that hold on the baffle plate and the knuckle spindle, which is this part here. Once we remove those and take out these circlips here, we can remove our spindle and that gets us back to the knuckle. These are a 14 millimeter. Okay, 
Now we have a circlip on the front here that retains our CV. So that's our spindle and this is our CV. So now we want to remove our knuckle. So you've got two kingpin bearings and they're 14 millimeter with four bolts on each of them. And there's one bearing Sometimes these can be quite hard to get out, so what I find helps is just tapping it with a hammer and rocking the knuckle. You don't want to damage them or belt them too hard, so just do be careful if they are stuck. Ah, yes. So the roller bearings in this lower kingpin bearing are cooked. They're all chipped and not very nice at all. Okay, so now we need to take off the rear seal, which is six 12 mil bolts. So now we have everything disassembled. We'll cut these seals off and throw them in the bin. And we want to clean absolutely everything. Everything that's come off this, knuckle, spindle, um, any bearings that you want to reuse. So I'm going to reuse the wheel bearings. So I'm going to wash the old grease out and then repack them with fresh grease. Um, you can clean up any brake components that you want. Um, now's a really good time to get in and just deep scrub everything because we know this has been leaking. We've sprayed oil absolutely everywhere. Um, we want all these seals to work properly, so get in there and scrub everything you can um, because it's a lot easier to do it while it's apart than while it's on the car. Um, so I'm going to take a couple of minutes to go do that now. Now we're going to sand the ball, make it nice and clean. So now we're going to prime and paint the ball. Now these are the old bearing races, so they're okay to get paint into. If you've already installed the new bearing races at this point, be very careful, you don't want paint in them. It's probably not going to cause that big of a problem, but you know, by the book you still don't want paint in them. So now I'm going to remove the kingpin bearing race and it has a kingpin plug here that we don't want to damage and you really don't want to damage them because you can reuse them. That's our kingpin plug so we've not bent that one too badly so we will be able to refit him. This one too, still nice and round, we'll be able to use those again. So now we're going to remove the kingpin bearing races, top and bottom, and we're just going to heat up the sphere a little bit, just to try and get a little bit of stretch around those races so they come out a little bit easier. So that's our old race out, now to do the same to the top. And that's our two races out. I'm going to clean them up and get them prepped for the new races to go in. So now we're going to reinstall our kingpin plugs. So they go in from the top. Like so. And they'll have two little 
punch outs on them where they went through these um, cutouts for the kingpin. And you just want to reshape them if you need to. Just make sure that they're circular, not bent. So now we're going to slap our plug back in. Like so. Make sure he's nice and snug. And we'll get our new race. So we've got our race in place there. I haven't got a punch kit, so I'm just using the biggest socket I have. Gonna sit him up on the perimeter. He's the same diameter as the race, that's what you want. You don't want something that's gonna push on the inside of the race. You wanna get him right on the top edge there. And we're going to just punch him in. I haven't preheated anything, there's no lube. I wiped off any grease on either surface there because we don't want the race to spin, we want the bearing to spin. And you'll hear it made a different noise then. That's how you tell that it's all the way in. So that's our new race and plug installed. Gonna do the same thing on the bottom. The bottom is a little bit more tricky just because it's awkward going from the underside, but it's the same process. So I've just painted the outside of the ball and now I'm gonna punch out this seal in here. So I wanna collapse it so I can pull it out. We're not reusing this seal obviously. Um, so we're just going to try and break it in a way that we can remove it. Um, be very careful not to damage the axle itself. We only want to hit the seal. What we've done there is just deformed this seal enough that it'll shrink in the housing there. We can remove it. I've been told that these trail gear seals aren't meant to be lubricated when you insert them because it will cause them to rotate with the axle. So we want to insert them dry in there with no lubrication and then that will give them a nice firm fit. There won't be any lubrication and it'll stop them from spinning. So we're going to insert him now. You are meant to lubricate the inside when you put the axle in. So we've now got our inner axle seal in there. This is what will cause the oil to enter the spherical hub. And then what will cause your knuckle to leak is the actual um, knuckle seal. So now we want to split our kingpin bearings off of the kingpin plate. So I'm gonna clamp them up in the vise and we want to get a bearing puller. And you want to get under that rubber lip to make sure you're actually on the bearing. And it has to be reasonably tight. Now this is just a puller that I bought off eBay. It comes in a kit, not very expensive. You can buy the same things at your normal stores like um, Repco and stuff, but it's gonna cost you more. If you think ahead and you know you want to do this, order this off eBay, it'll cost you about half as much. Just like that, we've pulled it off. Now we want to throw this in the cleaner. So here's another look at how we remove this bearing with this puller tool. Um, it's really easy if you have the right tools. I don't really have any advice if you don't have the right tools, but look ahead and find out what you need. It's good to have this stuff for future jobs. And here's a look at where we're up to with the axle. So it's looking pretty schmick, ready to go for the new gear to go in next episode. Um, and it's all nice and clean, which is the important bit. So that's all I've got for you guys for this episode. I'll see you guys in the next one.